So welcome back to Cozy Rosy Crochet and the second part of the Rose Cardigan Crochet Along. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to work up the first part of both of your side panels. So you are going to be making two of these but don't fasten them off because there's going to be a second section to go with this part. I'm going to be using the same materials that you used for our back panel. So I have my 5mm hook and my Respect Recycled Polyester Blend from Lion Brand Yarns. Now, before we get started, if you haven't already, do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell, so you know that as soon as the next part of the Rose Crochet Along has been released, and of course you'll get to keep up with all the other pattern tutorials that are released too. As I did with the back panel portion of this pattern, I'm gonna be sharing with you the written version at the same time, so we can correlate those abbreviations to the words that I'm saying to help you increase your pattern reading skills as well. As always, don't be afraid to ask any questions in the comments so that I can respond to them and make sure that you're happy with how you're making your cardigan. We're going to start by making our slip knot and placing that onto our hook. Now, as I've mentioned, we're going to be making two of these. So, with, so one of the panels will become your left side and the other side will become the right side because what we're going to do is after we've worked this section of the pattern, you're going to find the first video released to work the left side of your decreases. And then in a week's time, the next part will be released, which will be the right hand side of your decreases. What's going to happen is it's going to create a nice sweetheart neckline, kind of like a V-neck. Um, and then we're going to work our shoulders after that. When I say shoulders, I just mean the bit above where your neckline is created. As you can see on the screen, for row one, we're going to begin by making our chain and that will be different for each size that we're making. So for extra small, you're making a chain of 25, small will make a chain of 27, medium will make a chain of 31, large will be making a 35, extra large will be doing a chain of 37, 2XL will be working a chain of 41, 3XL will be a chain of 43, 4XL will have a chain of 47, and finally, 5XL will have a chain of 49. So remember to do our chain, we simply yarn over the hook and bring it through the loop on our hook. And we do that for the number we need for our size. Now I'm making an extra large, so I'm going to be needing to make a chain of 37. And 37. Now there's a crow and a magpie having a row outside of the window. So I'm sorry if you can hear that, I'm hoping you can't. Now, just like we did on our back panel, once we have our beginning chain done, we're going to start by working our extended half double crochets into our chain. So we're going to yarn over the hook ready. Remember that this loop doesn't count as a stitch. There's our first chain. We're going to work one extended half double crochet into that second chain from hook. So we've yarned over. We're inserting our hook into that second chain. Yarn over. Bring our loop up. We have those three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through just that first loop on our hook before we yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops. We're going to be working that into each of our chains. So we ignore the big, big hole that we've created and we're working into that next chain. Bring our loop up, yarn over to pull through that first loop, not both Fiona and yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're just going to continue to repeat that all the way down to the end of our chain so that we have then completed row one. I will meet you back once you've worked one extended half double crochet into each chain across and I'll see you in a moment. Once we've finished that first row of extended half double crochets, depending on which size you are making, your stitch count will be 48, 54, 60, 66, 72, 78, 84, 90 and 96. So make sure you've checked your stitch count. As I said before, when we started our back panel, it's important to remember that we need the correct stitch count to start our pattern with. We also need to make sure that we're not smiling or frowning so that our chain is nice and even. I do have a slight curl, that's okay. I had that with my back panel and that went away as I continued up the pattern. So the stitch repeat that we're using in our side panels is the same as our back panels. So we're gonna continue on to row two to six, beginning with a chain one and turning 
We then work one extended half double crochet into the same stitch as our chain one, because that chain one does not count as a stitch. And we're going to repeat that for rows two, three, four, five, and six. So we, once we've reached the end of row six, we should have a row count of six, ready to continue into our half double crochet V stitches on that next row. So work your next six rows. As always, it's important to remember that if you need to, the written pattern is of course visible over on the website that I've linked for you here in the top right hand corner. If you ever need to double check something, you'll find the written pattern there, as well as some other hints and tips that I might have glossed over in my video. I'll see you in the moment at the end of row six, once we've made all those extended half double crochet rows. Once you've completed your rows one to six, now's a good time just to double check the length or the width of your side panel to make sure that it is matching the schematic. I popped it back on the screen for you here just to double check that you've made the right size panel for your cardigan. In theory, this should be half the size or half the width of your back panel. So you can always place it against your back panel as well and check that you're halfway across. The reason I mention this is your tension might have changed since you made your back panel or you might just be in a different mood and that can affect your tension. So it is really worth making sure that you've made a size appropriate side panel, especially the first one. If you're working your second side panel, always worth double checking and placing them on top of each other to check that they're the same width. So we're going to continue with our pattern repeat. If you're familiar with the pattern and you just want to know how many repeats we have to do, you can skip ahead to the next chapter. There should be a link in the description box or if you're watching on a laptop or a computer, that's what it's called, you should see the chapters on the right hand side there. For the rest of us, we're going to go into row seven and we start with a chain of one. We're going to start with our half double crochet rows. So once you've done your chain one, we're going to work one half double crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. So there's my chain one, there's my stitch. We yarn over the hook, insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So the pattern repeat for this row is we skip the next stitch and then into the next row, we're going to work one half double crochet, a chain one and a further half double crochet into that same stitch. You just reinsert the hook after yarning over, bring your loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops to make your half double crochet V stitch. We skip the next stitch and repeat that again, working one half double crochet, a chain one and a further half double crochet into the same stitch. We're going to repeat this all the way across to our last stitch and that's where I'm going to meet you. So skip your next stitch, work one half double crochet, a chain one and a further half double crochet all into the same stitch. Repeat that across and I'll meet you for that last stitch of row seven. I'm just working my last half double crochet V stitch before my last stitch. Then in this last stitch of row seven, we simply work one final half double crochet. Picking up an extra, there we are. So at the end of row seven, you should have the beginning of our beautiful lace section. And I'm gonna be lazy and count my chain one spaces. So depending on which size you're making, for the, ex for the extra small, you should have 11 chain one spaces and then 12, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20, 22, and 23 for the five XL. With row eight, we're working back into our chain one spaces. So we start with our turning chain of one. We're gonna work one half double crochet into the same stitch as our chain one, because that chain one doesn't count. We're working one half double crochet. And this time we're working into our chain one spaces. So in between, the stitches of that previous V stitch into the chain one space. So we yarn over, we're skipping that first stitch and going straight into that chain one space in between. Yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through all three loops for our half double crochet. We chain one 
and we're working a further half double crochet into that same chain one space. We're going to repeat this all the way across. So we're skipping the next half double crochet and working into those chain one spaces, working one half double crochet, chain one and a further half double crochet. Exactly the same as we did for our back panel. We're just repeating it so that we have the same rows matching on our front panels. So continue to repeat all the way across and I will meet you for our last stitch of row eight. So I've just worked my final chain one space and I'm just gonna skip that last stitch and work one half double crochet into our last stitch of the row. So our stitch count for row eight should be the same as we had for row seven. So we should have um, 11, 12, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20, 22, or 23 chain one spaces again. For row nine, we're gonna be setting up to work the rest of our extended half double crochet block. So we start by making a chain of one, turning our work, ready to work into that same stitch as our chain one. So we yarn over, we're inserting our hook into that same stitch as our chain one, yarn over to bring that loop up. We yarn over, pull through that first loop, and then yarn over to pull through the remaining three loops. We're gonna skip the first stitch and work into that chain one space. So we yarn over, insert into the chain one space, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over to just pull through that first loop only and yarn over to pull through the remaining three loops. We skip the actual chain one itself and work into the top of the next stitch, working one extended half double crochet. It's just that space there, or that open stitch, not into the space, but into the stitch itself. So we yarn over, insert our hook into that stitch. We just worked into the chain one. This is the top of our next stitch. Yarn over, bring your loop up, yarn over to pull through just that first loop before we yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we're gonna repeat this all the way across, working one extended half double crochet into each chain one space, and then one extended half double crochet into the next stitch. We skip the next stitch before working an extended half double crochet into the chain one space, and then work our next extended half double crochet into the next stitch there. So continue to repeat that all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of row nine to talk you through all of the repeats we need depending on which length we're making. Just worked my last extended half double crochet into my chain one space. There are two stitches remaining and we need to work one extended half double crochet into each. There's my chain one and there's my next stitch. So work one extended half double crochet in there. And then we have one final one into our last stitch. It's always that tricky one that you could skip in error, which would result in us losing a stitch. So at the end of row nine, we should be back to the same stitch count we had for row one. So an extra small will have 24 stitches, a small will have 26, a medium will have 30, a large would have 34, extra large will be 36, a 2XL will have 40, 3XL will have 42, 4XL would have 46, and 5XL will have 48 extended half double crochets. Now, just like our back panel, we need to do a number of repeats to create the length we need for these side panels, but it is different. Because we're working a decrease to create our neckline, we need to end our repeat early to work our decrease stitches. If you're making the cropped version of this cardigan, you need to go straight to the decrease rows after working this first panel of nine rows, which is why the video is already available for the left side of our decrease rows. I'm gonna pop the link both in the description box, it will also be on the playlist, and of course, it will be in the top right-hand corner once I've given you all of the repeats. If you're making the hip length cardigan, you're going to need to repeat rows two to six, two more times for a total of 25 rows, for mid thigh, you're going to be repeating rows two to nine four times for a total row count of 41. And for the knee length, you're doing 
rows two to nine five times for a total of 49 rows. As always, you can find the written pattern over on the website, but it is really important to note if you added any extra length to your back panel of your cardigan, say you did one extra repeat, you need to make your extra repeat now before you go on to your decrease rows. In the top right hand corner here, you can find the link to the decrease rows and Remember that you need to make two side panels. One will be your left and those decreases are available for you right now. And the right hand decreases will be released one week later than this video originally released. So you can go ahead and make that other decrease as well. The reason they're in separate videos is we're decreasing in different places depending on which side panel that you're making. So for instance, the left, I can't remember which way around this is now, <laughs> the left panel is gonna decrease on one side and the right panel is gonna decrease on the other so that when you place them together, you've got your, the right side of your pattern facing. As if by magic, I have one of my panels ready to decrease on. So you can see that I've got the full length of my panel here and you can get both of your panels to this point before you move on to your decreases. That way it's going to be easy to tell which one is left and which one is right. So for instance, I can give you a better example of how the edges will meet. And what we want when we've finished our pattern is for the right side of both patterns showing at the front. As you can see at the moment, both our panels are on the same edge. So if we decreased in the same place, we would end up with two decreases here. If I then wanted these decrease, oh, let's do it here, sorry. Let's imagine we're doing it on this side. So if we had a decrease coming up on this side and a decrease coming up on this side, to get those decreases to match, I'd have to use this panel inside out. And what would happen is the ridging that's formulated as we make this extended half double crochet doesn't match. I hope that makes sense. I don't know how else to explain it, but this is why we are doing a right panel and a left panel so that we have decreases on opposite sides because at the moment when they're at the same point, oh, that's going to come undone. We would have a decrease here and decrease here, which means that one of our panels would be inside out. So this is why we have a left and a right so that we take off the same sections and our panels match up absolutely perfectly <laughs> if I make them match. So you can have the right, the ridges showing on the same panels or in the same spaces. Ta -da! So I hope that all makes sense. So go ahead and make both your panels if you want to before you move on to your decreases. I certainly have done that. And then the left hand panel will be available for you to decrease on straight away with the right hand panel decreases releasing a little bit later. Wonderful. So <laughs> with all that in mind, as I've said, any questions, please comment below. I will come back to you as soon as I can with any answers that you need. I'm hoping you're loving how this is looking, especially when those panels are put together. And I am going to be back with you in the next video very shortly.